Carriers sail together as HMS Queen Elizabeth and Carrier Strike Group complete final exercise HMS Queen Elizabeth state-of-the-art F-35 fighter jets conducted missile firings during the exercise, marking the first time British jets have done so at sea for 15 years. And following the exercise, the United Kingdom two aircraft carriers, HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales were able to meet each other at sea for the very first time. Defence Secretary Ben Wallace said, The United Kingdom Carrier Strike Group is a great symbol of collaboration, both across the armed forces and our industry partners. Sailing together through a number of different environments, the partnership will uphold British values and international order. By leading a large international exercise, practicing its wide range of capabilities, and demonstrating its formidable size, Strike Warrior 21 has proved that years of hard work, training and planning have paid off. The United Kingdom Carrier Strike Group is ready to promote global Britain and confront future security threats of the 21st century. Strike Warrior saw the Carrier Strike Group pitted against warships from NATO's Standing Maritime Group 1 to prove it can undertake high-intensity operations in response to a broad range of crisis and conflict situations. Activities included live missile firings at sea, training with NATO, mine countermeasures operations and submarine exercises. Demonstrating the ability of the strike group to operate alongside NATO allies, Strike Warrior featured forces from Denmark, France, Germany, Latvia, the Netherlands, Norway, Poland, the United States and one non-NATO country, Australia. The two-week exercise formed part of the wider military biannual exercise, Joint Warrior, where the Royal Navy, Royal Air Force, British Army and UK Strategic Command, alongside NATO and Australian partners, conducted land, cyber and space exercises. This was the final test of the Carrier Strike Group before it sets sail on a maiden operational deployment this weekend that will see it undertake engagements and exercises with more than one-fifth of the world's nations. Led by HMS Queen Elizabeth, the task group will interact with 40 nations across the Mediterranean, Indian Ocean and Indo-Pacific including India, Japan, the Republic of Korea and Singapore. A highlight of the exercise included the first missile firings from a British jet at sea for 15 years, conducted by the F-35 stealth fighters. In the tests off the west coast of Scotland, the F-35s launched from Queen Elizabeth's flight deck to intercept a Mirac target drone. By successfully bringing down two bogies jet target drones with air-to-air -air missiles, the pilots of 617 Squadron, the Dambusters showed how they can protect HMS Queen Elizabeth from air attack during the deployment and demonstrated the potency of the fifth-generation strike fighter. Captain James Blackmore, commander of the Carrier Air Group, said, the first successful ASRAAM firing is an important moment for the F-35B, and for carrier strike. This was the first time a British jet has fired a missile at sea since before the retirement of the Sea Harrier in 2006. These firings proved our confidence in the weapon system and demonstrate the growing potency of this fifth-generation strike fighter. Elsewhere, Type 23 frigates HMS Kent and HMS Richmond conducted a stores transfer and other exercises with Royal Navy and Allied submarines. Proving the ability of the strike group's differing units to work together seamlessly, HMS Kent and her Wildcat helicopter from Yeovilton-based 815 Naval Air Squadron transferred vital stores to the surface dispute class submarine. <music> Lieutenant Lee Colthart, 206 Flight Commander for Shepard, Kent's embarked Wildcat, said, This is just one example of the utility of a Wildcat in the carrier strike group. Wildcat crews train for a variety of tasks in order to protect and sustain the task group. He added, our task was to deliver stores around the task group including the attached submarine, to prove interoperability and capability between air, surface and subsurface units. Tomorrow's task could be anything from searching for enemy units to delivering rotary wing strike with our Martlet missile system.
HMS Richmond acted as both hunter and hunted in her interaction with the astute class submarine, putting into practice her anti-submarine warfare capabilities. Lieutenant Commander David Tinsley, the ship's weapon engineer officer, said, Our hull-mounted and towed sonar systems are incredibly capable at locating sub-surface contacts, combined with the very best operators and environmental analysis methods, the equipment performed exceptionally well in tracking the submarine. <music> Lieutenant Commander Kyle O'Regan, the ship's principal warfare officer added, Getting to work with a live submarine, one of the most capable in the world, is a real privilege and my team and I are looking forward to doing it for real during the forthcoming deployment. Following the conclusion of Exercise Strike Warrior, the United Kingdom two new Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales rendezvoused at sea for the first time as the former returned to Portsmouth. Commodore Steve Morehouse, Commander United Kingdom Carrier Strike Group said, Having previously commanded both HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales, it was hugely exciting to be present as the two met at sea for the first time. I know that sense of pride and accomplishment is shared by thousands of others, military and civilian, who have contributed to the Royal Navy's carrier renaissance over the past decade or more. The strategic significance is profound, building one aircraft carrier is a sign of national ambition but building two and operating them simultaneously is a sign of serious national intent. It means Britain has a continuous carrier strike capability, with one vessel always ready to respond to global events at short notice. Few other navvies can do that. Britain is back in the front rank of maritime powers.